Hi guys! Today I'll be walking you through how I decorate these tropical vacation sugar cookies. Make sure to check out my blog post that I've linked below for written instructions as well as the supply list and everything you're going to need to make this project come to life. For the sake of the video, I'm only going to show you one of each type of consistency. The first one is a flood consistency. In the blog post that I've linked below, you can see all the different colors and what consistencies that they have to be for the project. You can tell that my flood icing is really quite thick. It's something that doesn't settle well on its own. You really have to jiggle, jiggle it and agitate the surface of the icing with a scribe to get it to settle smoothly. I describe it like a 25 second icing. So anything you're going to be using to flood in a portion of the cookie surface is going to be this consistency. I'm going to mix the white, pink, brown, orange, blue, and black all the same consistency. The second consistency that we're going to be using is our toothpaste consistency that's going to be used to pipe the little flour that's on that coconut drink. You can tell that it's super thick and all I've done to achieve this is keep adding powdered sugar until it becomes this thick. Right now I've got some plastic wrap. I'm pulling it out and I'm going to place the thick toothpaste consistency icing in here. Roll it up like a little bullet of icing. You can just put it in another piping bag if you prefer, but I just like to keep it cleaner this way. You can also choose to use a coupler with your piping bag. That way you can easily switch between tips. And for the sake of this design, I actually wanted to pull out the bullet of icing and use it again for something else, which is why I chose to put it in a piece of plastic. Here I'm putting the tip into the bag being careful to not accidentally slide the pointy parts of the tip against the side of the bag to damage it and potentially cause it to rupture when you apply pressure. Snip off the front of or the tip of the bag, push the tip through so that it's snugly pressed up into the bottom of the bag. I'm gonna trim off a bit of the plastic on that bullet of icing and place my bullet of icing into my piping bag that's been fitted with the tip. And now this bag is ready to go. Have all your prepped icing set aside. We're going to prep our sunglasses first. What I like to do for sunglasses in order to make sure that my lenses are the same shape and the same size or are uniform is to make a template. So I simply take the cutter and I trace around the outer edge of it so that I can compensate for just a natural bit of spreading that might happen when you bake your cookie. And then I'm going to carefully sketch in what I want my lens to wear, I guess I want the lens to sit. And I'm not being very, you know, super accurate or precise or anything like that. And I'm going to cut out the shape of the sunglasses. And I'm also going to cut out the lens. And this is the part where I do have to be a little bit precise and you can sort of adjust along the way. I'm using cardstock here, but a piece of just regular paper works perfectly well. If you know you're gonna be using the template a lot, I recommend taping over the whole thing on both sides with like shipping tape. So you're kind of laminating it and then cutting it out and it'll last longer. So I only cut out one side, flip it over and make sure it mirrors on the other side. I'm taking a food doodler pen and just tracing that lens on both sides. Again, by flipping it over so it's uniform on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the lens. I'm using my white flood icing and then using a scribe to agitate it and smooth it out. You can see how it starts out really, really thick, but after using the scribe, you can smooth it out quite a bit and it stays quite puffy. Let that part of your sunglasses fully dry or else we can't 
paint on it. So set it aside and don't touch it until it's dry all the way through. The next cookie we're going to work on is a flamingo. The first thing we're going to do is fill in that white center part of the floaty. And to give myself a little guide, I scratched that shape, that just a general shape, into the surface of the cookie using my scribe. The reason why I decided I wanted a filled in shape was that it's just more robust if there's no hole in the middle. I'm filling it in with my thick white flood. And same thing here, I'm going to settle it with a scribe and you can kind of see how I move in teeny tiny circular motions to adjust the outline of that flamingo floaty. I'm giving it a wiggle and shake to settle it. Now I scratched in the beak of the flamingo and I'm putting the black icing down. That's part of the beak. I'm going to use a white icing for the next part of the beak. Or face, beak slash face. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of that flamingo floaty, first by outlining with pink and then filling it in with that same pink. You can kind of tell I'm dragging and dropping when I'm outlining. And then I'm really 90 degrees placed above the cookie, um, 90 degrees, which is the position of my bag to the cookie and applying a lot of pressure to get that icing out. You can see that once I get to the butt of that floaty, I overfill a little bit on the top butt and I kind of use my scribe to move the icing down towards the bottom portion of the floaty. All right, so after your coconut shell is dry, usually this takes about eight hours, we're going to put in the umbrella and add on the rim. I'm using the edge of a bowl to guide me and I'm using the scribe to kind of scratch that guide into place so I can have the curve of the umbrella all figured out. Check out the scratch in the surface. It just serves as a great guide for that umbrella. Once your coconut shell is all dry, we're gonna add on the rim as well as a texture for the coconut. So first thing we're gonna do is add on the rim, add a little bit of that brown to the rim of the coconut shell, and I'm going to sprinkle on some sprinkles and just really adhere it to the rim for a little bit of fun, you know, texture and dimension. After that, we're gonna crumble up just a small bit of dry paper towel put some brown icing on the surface of that coconut shell area, and then use our paper towel in dabbing motions. Kind of agitate the icing to create a little bit of coconut shell texture. The next thing we're going to do here is work on the umbrella. You can tell how there are kind of indents. That means we worked in sections. So we did some sections, let them dry, and then did every other section. So right now I'm going to be outlining the umbrella. And then I'm going to be dividing it into six sections. And then I'm going to fill in every other section. Here I'm doing a wet on wet technique. So I lay the first wet layer down, immediately add that white icing into it, and then I drag my scribe through to create these little flowers. I clean my scribe off after every drag so that none of the white icing get into the blue icing, vice versa. This is a really easy way to create a cute and impressive effect. So I'm going to do that for every other section, set this aside and let it dry so that when we fill in the alternating sections, there will be that divide between each section. We're also going to take our white and create that straw that's coming out of the coconut drink. Now that the first sections of the umbrella had some time to dry, and crust over, we're going to fill in the remainder 
of that umbrella. Same exact technique and concept. We're also going to complete the rest of that coconut drink portion. I'm just mixing a little bit of white and orange to create the actual liquid part of the drink. Now we're going to set that aside and wait for it to dry for a few hours so that we can finish up the straw which we're going to paint and add the stripes on. And we will also add that flower on as well as some white accents on the umbrella. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is paint our sunglasses. You want to make sure that the lenses of your sunglasses are completely dry, so they're solid to the touch. You can tell I'm making sure that it's very solid, very dry. I'm taking a very fine detail brush. You can use a variety of brushes. And I'm taking one of the lidded palettes that are available on our website. And I've put some gold dust in here, which is the Sugar Art Golden Halo, as well as some gel colors that I've used in previous projects. And I'm simply going to rehydrate them with some vodka. You can also use any other type of alcohol. Alcohol evaporates very quickly. There's no taste, there's no alcohol content afterwards and it works very well for painting on cookies because it won't eat away at the icing. Grab a little bit of sponge. I just trimmed off as part of my kitchen sponge and I'm going to use that to create the sky background in the sunglass cookies. I'm saturating the surface of the sponge with some vodka just by itself. And you can tell it's a little stained by the food coloring on it. That's okay. And then I'm, uh, I'm kind of um, hydrating the blue and I'm going to dip my sponge bit in it just a little bit. And then in dabbing motions, I'm going to put on that sky. So dabbing with one side to put on the blue and then with the other side, I'm kind of blending it out. So one side has the color, one side has almost no color, and you alternate between them to create a bit of a textured sky. Next thing we're gonna do is put that horizon on, or I don't know, where the water meets the sky, I guess, not really horizon. And then we're going to blend it in slowly with our brushes. You can use a detail brush, you can use a bigger brush, or whatever you've got is fine. We have an amazing set of brushes on our website in case you wanna check them out. And then we're going to just keep adding colors. So I'm blending yellow together, a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. And then I'm just going to keep blending until I get the color that I want. And if you find that you go too far, you can always take away that color or kind of desaturate it by wetting your sponge and then kind of using the sponge to soak up any of that excess color works really well. So I'm adding some white down as well to kind of lighten it up. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to blend it all together. And now that looks more sandy, but it's not quite there. So we keep building and we keep building. So it's very forgiving and I want it to look a little bit textured. So I love using that paper towel trick, the sponge trick. And now I'm going to use a bit of green and my very fine detail brush to go in and add some plant accents and just give it a little bit of life. I'm adding a little bit of gold on there just for a tiny bit of shimmer. This is really up to you. You can do whatever design you like. This is what I did. And then to finish off the sunglasses, we are going to fill in the rest of the cookie with the orange icing. You're gonna set that aside, let it dry completely before adding on any details. If you look at the picture on our blog, that sample picture, you're gonna see that they have little gold dots on the edges of the glasses. 
we are going to do that. We just need to have this layer crust over first. So, you know, give it an hour, let it crust. If you're using a dehydrator, a little less. And then we're going to add on the dots. Check out those dots, you guys. So I've let the glasses crust for an hour and I'm adding on the dots. We started with two here and that's what the sample has, but I decided to do three for the sake of the video because we're just having fun, right? I'm gonna let the dots dry before we paint on them. Give it about 20 minutes and I mixed some golden halo with vodka into a thick paste and I painted on it. Now we're going to finish that flamingo. Your flamingo should have been drying for several hours and be solid to the touch. I'm gonna add on the eye with some black icing and use some black gel food color and a detail brush to create some eyelashes. And in order to get the golden dots on the flamingo floaty, I am saturating my golden halo dust with some vodka and I'm using the dot brush, which is a pretty unique tool that we designed to, I don't know, create a lazy polka dot without having to do wet on wet or if you forget to do wet on wet and without having to pull out an airbrush. And the way you use it is by simply holding it 90 degrees above your surface and applying varying amounts of pressure to create various sizes of dots. And if they dry with a little bit of excess powder, you can simply brush it out brush it off with another brush so here i'm being pretty gentle because that icing is not fully dry but check check it out i just dented the icing because it's not fully dry so if you let your cookies fully dry so that it does not dent to the touch you can apply more pressure with that dot brush now that your coconut drink cookie has some time to dry and your straw is dry to the touch, we're going to add on some accents by painting some stripes on your straw. They're like candy stripes, think candy cane. I used a detail brush here dipped in food color that's been mixed with vodka just like the way that we did our sunglasses. We're also going to add little accent dots on our umbrellas, kind of where they are separated and that gives it a little bit more dimension. And the very last part of doing the coconut drink is adding on that flower accent. So we're going to be taking some of that stiff pink icing and I'm going to show you on just a piece of cardboard how to pipe it. I have the leaf 101 tip here or petal tip, I guess. And we want to pipe with the fat side facing the center of the cookie or the center of the flower. And then we're going to squeeze the bag and apply pressure to create these petals. So watch what I do here on the piece of paper. So with the fat side in, I'm going to press, I'm going to be angled such a way that I am about 30 degrees from the surface. So I'm not 90 degrees up, I am angled 30 degrees, not 45, 30. <laughs> Just making sure my icing's there. And then I'm going to squeeze, apply varying amounts of pressure and move at the same time. So I recommend you play around with the pressure and the movement to see what kind of ruffles you end up getting. And I just want you to have fun and experiment, moving back and forth, up and down. That way you can learn how to create these petals. Creating florals is much easier if you can spin or turn the surface that you're piping on. So here I'm kind of just turning the piece of paper if you are doing this on a cookie, you might want to put your cookie on a bigger piece of paper and spin it so that you get a better angle every time you want to create the next set of petals. But 
What also comes in handy like crazy, especially when you're doing florals, is a cookie swivel. I am the, using the one from Elsie Sweets here, but I will link you in the blog post to not only hers, but some of the other ones that work really well for people. And basically, it spins. You barely have to move your piping hand angle, and all you do is you use your non-dominant hand to spin the cookie swivel. Or cookie, oops, sorry. <laughs> Got a little crazy there. But if it was cookie, it had it'd have more weight than the piece of paper, so it'd hold itself down. But basically you spin and pipe at the same time and it could go a lot faster. And that's what we're going to do. And now we're gonna do it on the actual cookie. So watch here, I'm taking the cookie that we're about to finish putting on, on the swivel because it really helps and I'm wiping off the tip just to clean it off and just kind of get rid of any of the icing that might have dried because it is really dry in Sacramento. Positioning the fat side in, I am squeezing and moving at the same time. Squeezing, moving, and turning to create these petals. Look at how pretty that is and when you get the right consistency, it holds its shape really well. And then I'm just adding a little bit of accent in the middle, extra little details. And that's how you get your coconut drink. You are done with this cookie. Just like that, you guys have decorated three adorable cookies. Please smash that like button if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more in the future. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for when new videos come out. Please also check out our shop, borderlandsbakery.com slash shop for all of your favorite cookie decorating tools and supplies and visit our blog for a ton of additional cookie decorating inspo as well as small business information and just general baking. See you next time.